With the COVID crisis, more and more Americans are ordering food from the comfort of their homes. To serve these customers, two big companies emerge from this trend, Uber Eats and DoorDash. They connect merchants, drivers and consumers to deliver food to people's homes. DoorDash just announced their IPO and they filled their S1. In this video, I'll go over DoorDash numbers, its risk factors, and if you should buy DoorDash stock. This is Everyday Finance. Please don't forget to subscribe. DoorDash has built an impressive business. It's serving around 18 million people. It has signed up around 400,000 merchants and it has around 1 million dashers in its platform. It became the number one delivery food app in the US. Even though they are the category leader in the US, they are only serving 6% of the US population. That means they have a lot of room to grow. DoorDash believes that they are in the early phases of the broad market adoption. DoorDash has become massive. In 2019, they generated around $885 million. And in the nine months of this year, they generate around $1.9 billion. Even though they are growing like crazy, their gross profit is still positive. They generate around $335 million of profit last year and around 944 dollars of gross profit this year. DoorDash has positive unit economics and it has three powerful virtual cycles seen in its S1. Number one, local network effects, the ability to attract more merchants, that drives more selection, bringing more consumers, and that drives the flywheel. Economies of scale, when more consumers join the platform, there's more volume in the orders that increases revenue for dashers, which in turn increases the number of dashers and that in turn increases the speed of delivery. And last but not least, brand awareness. Their platform continues to grow and so that drives more brand awareness and brand affinity. DoorDash is investing in its growth and you can see why it's investing in its growth. More growth drives the flywheel faster which brings more margin benefits in the future. DoorDash is playing a massive market. In 2019, Americans spent $1.5 trillion in food and beverages, and out of that, $600 billion in restaurants. And DoorDash is benefiting from a huge trend. In 2009, 40% of that restaurant spending was done off-premise and today 50% of the dollar spend is off-premise. DoorDash believes that that trend will continue. In 2019, DoorDash had gross order value of the order of $8 billion. Compare that to the massive market that they are reaching for, that's $300. $20 billion. DoorDash grew massively in the last three years. How did they do it? They follow a similar strategy that Pinduoduo did. They focus on markets that competitors didn't focus. DoorDash focus on suburban markets. They were underserved, they, ha they have higher basket size due to families, and better economics. No wonder when you look right now, DoorDash has 50% of the overall market. Residents in these markets are more impacted by the lack of alternatives. They need to drive to go and pick up some food. And so consumers in that market benefit more. DoorDash is attacking a few different areas. First, it charges consumer a percentage of the total order. Second, it charges merchant a percentage fee that's agreed before by contract. They also charge a percentage of the money that goes to the dasher. In this example, you can see how much it goes to each one in the platform and how much DoorDash keeps. Total marketplace GOV in Q3 was around $7.6 billion and there were around 236 million orders. As you can see in this graph, growth has also increased for each new cohort that has joined. It also has increased its margins over time. It generated around $86 million of EBITDA or 10% of its revenue in Q3 and in Q2 it generated around 12% of EBITDA or around 
79 million dollars of adjusted EBITDA. Their total orders and the volume increased around 240% from last year to this year. That's due a lot to the COVID crisis. Here's my favorite DoorDash chart. They're not only adding new users, but existing users are ordering more and more food. What is interesting to watch is that sales and marketing to acquire a customer in the first year is generally elevated, but it tends to go to the same level as users mature into the platform and it tends to stay stable at around 2 to 3% of the marketplace GOV in the subsequent years. One of the most interesting aspects of DoorDash is DoorDash Pass. It's very similar to Amazon Prime. With DoorDash Pass, users pay $9.99 per month and they get lower fees or $0 fees to deliver their food, which in turn increases the total volume in their platform and makes the users much more reliable when using the app. By September 2020, they had around 5 million consumers using DoorDash Pass. And with that, they were able to decrease the consumer fees by 20% in average, with improvements in its delivery platform. Let's go over its risk factors in its S1. They have a history of net losses. They might not grow as fast as they were growing. They have a limited history operating in its market. And the most important risk is that their dashers may be reclassified as employees. In its latest private valuation, DoorDash was valued at $16 billion. We'll see what's the market value of DoorDash. Let's estimate around $433 million of earnings. That's a 36 times multiple. That's a high multiple. Their total addressable market and their growth could justify that. If we look from Q2 to Q3, they were growing at 17% quarter over quarter. That compounds to 87% year over year. We know that we are at the early stages of food delivery. And so DoorDash has opportunity to become a massive company in that space. I hope you guys like this video. If you have any comments, leave down below. I hope you have a great day. Bye.